Jathew. Hello. Hi, friendos. How are you? Good to see you guys. Hello. We're back at it, chat. Got to get a couple more hours in tonight, chat. We have to hit. We have to hit level 60. How are you? Hi. How you guys doing? You feeling okay? Doing all right? You guys getting enough sleep? You drinking enough water out there, huh? Got to keep tabs on you guys. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. Friend of the Grummels. At least 12 more hours. Now we're talking. Those are the sort of numbers that I want to see more of, man. Daft and Alive, how are you? Hey. I wish you were the right faction, Papa Milty. Well, you see, thankfully, I have uh, characters on both factions because I'm not some crybaby horde little fucking undercity dwelling gum sucking no concession making i got a new job so that's good dude where where's the new job wild card tell me more do you typically get addicted to games like this milton no, i'm not addicted i could stop anytime i could stop right now if i wanted to i just don't want to that's all just not now like maybe some other time i just don't have to do it now i mean i could do it whenever i wanted i just don't want to do it now that's what all i'm getting at just not right now exactly maybe later i could stop later if i wanted to I don't have to, but I could. <laughs> I'm not addicted. You're addicted. Shit, man. Gotta get that level cap. Gotta make ourselves available as a healer. Get some Pog AF gear. Toxic Salad, how you doing, dude? Hey, um... A Sergeant Porky's Bacon Pants. Thanks for the 13 months, dude. Uh, <laughs> Sassy Quatch, thanks for the 15 months. Miserable Wraith, thanks for the 21 months. And Manny, thanks for the 19. How you doing? Hope everyone's having a good night tonight. Chat, tonight we had steak and taters for dinner. And uh, I won't lie, they were pretty transcendent. They were pretty transcendent. Erin makes these potatoes that she makes with like a French, a French onion flair to them. Oh. A little bit of HP sauce, count me in. Ms. Magic, thanks for the 200 bits. Hey, hope you're enjoying Shadowlands. Very, very much enjoying Shadowlands. Very much enjoying Shadowlands. Uh, there's quite a bit of, I find there's quite a bit of uh, dialogue in terms of the questing, but um, I'm still really enjoying it. I drove two hours with my cat to visit fam for the holiday. Dude, making the fucking trek, huh? Uh, I viewed a cabin out in the country tonight that I might buy as a first house. Do living in a cabin as a first house would be fucking sick. I am a huge, huge fan of uh, cabins, cottages, super down. Um, anyone have a good connection with an addiction therapist for our boy here? Oh man, unfortunately, uh, I, I, I wish you all the best of luck in your. Um, in your journey, I, I would worry about you looking for advice in Twitch chat. I don't think, I don't know if anyone feels comfortable making that sort of a recommendation, but uh, I think your best bet might be to Google resources in your uh, in your area. You weren't supposed to see that, Milton? Well, I mean, you said it in chat. Come on, dude. Come on, bro. Cabin in the woods, nothing can go wrong. Yeah, right? Aaron and I watched a very interesting um, B movie tonight that I don't even know the name of. It had John Malkovich and Vince Vaughn and Chris Hemsworth or Keith Hemsworth or whatever, whichever the non Thor brother is. I got accepted to college yesterday. Slampy, what are you going to be studying? The house of rituals Tell me everything to provide us with Adam. Stradama and I both suspect duplicity. <laughs> um, in no position to refuse. There's three brothers. Oh, they for fuck's sake. Are they all in movies? <laughs> Cambino, how you doing? Hey, hello. Stop it. Liam, Kevin, Skyler, Jeremy, fuck. Chris and Liam and someone else. Oh my God. It's one of them. Whichever the non, the non Thor one is, that's him. 
<laughs> it was good though. It got 5.9 on IMDb, but every now and then Aaron and I will just decide to give one of these movies a shot and it was quite good. We enjoyed it. Did he look kind of like Thor? He did look kind of like Thor, yes. Only a trained eye would know the difference. You look really good tonight, Milton. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Thanks. I got all dressed up for you in my fucking 16 year old Metallica shirt. Really want to hit. Uh, really want to hit 60. So we're basically just continuing with the grind. Can openly accuse the liches of treachery. So Budget Thor. <laughs> devised a new potion. A last resort to protect Stradama should the need arise. If they all stand on a staircase, they would be called Step Brothers. Can someone ban Vobile? Is it possible for someone to just ban Vobile? Can we just... Can someone just take care of that already? You know what I mean? Chat, come on. Let's be honest. Okay, hold on. We're going to listen to some nice music. Uh... <clears throat> what is this one? Oh, cute. Okay. This should be good. There. Perfect. <laughs> Am I following all the dialogue and lore in this? No. I'm doing what I always do, which is I, I try at first to um, keep up with it, and then I give up because my desire to hit max level outweighs my desire to keep up with the lore. So I just start blasting through step brothers will have so much more space for activities i had step siblings siblings for a very short period of time in my life and it was very strange i never felt like i connected with them at all and they were mostly unpleasant to me and tech smith man a pretty screwed up mom though do y'all celebrate thanksgiving in canada if so what are your plans interestingly bailey in canada and i'm not i'm not even kidding um in canada we celebrate a month before you guys uh thanksgiving for us was on october 12th i think so it's actually long gone for us i don't know why there's that difference no real explanation why am i dying so much fucking die dude the house of plagues i could kill by some horde dude or something oh Oh, I got the page that he wanted? Pog, dude. Okay. Corum the Cunning. Let's do it. Canada's Thanksgiving makes more sense time-wise than America. Oh, okay. Because October October 12th is obviously something significant in Canada. <laughs> well, I couldn't tell you what it was. I'm not up to, up to speed on the significance of Canadian... Uh, Holidays. Eat shit. What are you guys doing for uh, Thanksgiving? You guys have any uh, plans that you usually do? Any traditions or anything like that? You guys having family over, going over to family's places? What? Okay, we got that motherfucker too. Not binge playing WoW like you for certain. <laughs> yeah, yep. It's uh, <laughs> it's got its teeth into me, man. Staying in, teaching family to zoom. Hey, that'll be good. That's every family should learn how to zoom, man. I wish my mom was a little bit uh, more adept when it comes to technology. She struggles pretty hard with really basic concepts. She somehow managed to like disable the camera completely on her phone. So we were trying to have a video chat and she couldn't even manage to turn on her camera. It was, a, it was a whole fucking thing. Just my father, grandfather, my uncle for a meal. Well, that'll be nice. I may go two hours out to see my parents. Oh, that'd be a good time. It's tough, man. 2020 has been tough, you know, not being able to see family for so long. Making chocolate eclair and s'mores truffles for dinner with the parents. Wait. Oh, like, <laughs> like that's going to be the dessert. You don't mean that you have that for dinner. Although that does sound pretty fucking pog as well. 
Rollins misplaced the spreadsheet is Margrave Stradama's favorite free agent. Uh, meet me at the laboratory once okay. you've acquired it. My dad gets his first ever uh, smartphone a few weeks ago and already he wants to heat the phone out the window. My mom was the exact opposite, man. My mom fought so hard against owning a cell phone for her entire life. And then finally one day she decided to get a cell phone. And then every day after that, she expects me to text her 10 times a day. She would tell me again and again and again that she'd never have a cell phone. She would never ever own one. It was a terrible idea, blah, blah, blah. And then finally she got one and now she's like, why don't you text me more often? Like, oh my God. You already feel so entitled to something you didn't have 30 seconds ago. Um, couldn't get my mom to enter a URL into the address bar the other day, the same URL that I got her to go directly to and not Google search earlier that day. Oh no, dude, fuck. <laughs> Pool of mixed monstrosities. The fuck am I supposed to be doing in that? It's highlighted. Devouring thirst. Okay. So what do you want me to do, guy? Have you been keeping up with your rituals? What the fuck? Oozing ingredient, viscous oil delivered. Ah. I see. Viscous oil is what I need. Roger. Uh, my boyfriend hates all of my fruit jokes. Maybe I should let that man go. Boy. Wondering if I should have ever turned my fucking stream on tonight at all. <laughs> my family's getting together, but I don't think it's a good idea. I would rather be safe and zoom my elderly parent, my parents. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, we're dealing with trying to convince our family that we're not not seeing them for the holidays because we hate them. It's actually because, you know, we're, tr we're trying to keep their best interests in mind. Okay, so what the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? What the fuck is going on? Kill the slimes in the surrounding uh, ruins and collect the oozing ingredient viscous oil they may drop. Ah. Ah, uh, okay, so we just have to keep killing the correct. Oh, maybe it wasn't even the correct ooze. Come here, jerk. My internet is still shit, but I miss you and love you so effing much. Well, Gurgal, you just know that I'm going to be here whenever your internet starts working again, okay? This stream goes nowhere. It's done when I say it's done. <laughs> okay, so is that all my... Got all my goop now? Excellent. Oh, I see. You have to kill three and then run it back in between. I understand. We need a video of all the dad jokes he has from chat. Oh my God, don't torment me, okay? <laughs> Mods in the eternal prison. Got it. Yes, thank you. Does anyone in chat speak American Sign Language? This is a totally unrelated side note. It's indirectly related because we started watching a movie about a guy who spoke 37 languages, but it ended up being a terrible movie, so we stopped. But does anyone, can anyone speak American Sign Language? What I'm curious is how hard is it to learn? How hard is um, ASL to learn? I have no idea comparative to other languages how difficult it is. She said it was very hard to learn. Oof. I speak some, it's not that hard. I don't know, I couldn't say. Oh my goodness. Uh, I've always wanted to learn it. Yeah, I know, I want to learn it too. I think it'd be pretty, I think it'd be pretty sick. I've always, I've always wanted to learn sign language. I had a number of friends who took it in uh, university and they said that the professor was so adept at teaching um, American Sign Language that from the first day he never like he never spoke a word or anything he only used sign language but everyone by the end would understand enough of it he was like legendary at my university good boy multi playing alliance and not the bad guys horde I wish I could say I wish I could say that I was uh, your shining boy 
But the truth of the matter is that I'm going to be leveling a bunch of horde characters too. Level 57 Pog. Halls of Atonement. Okay, so this uh, this this album is awful and uh, really makes me want to shit my pants. So we're going to listen to this instead. Jingle Bell. Okay. A lo-fi Christmas album. Got it. <laughs> oh, Neural Johnson's here. I'll be a chain smoker. Oh, for Pete's puss. <laughs> Your biceps are becoming like cannons. Just wait until you see me on my wedding day, bro. I want Erin to be horrified by the size of my massive biceps. I want it to boggle her mind. Missable ooze, methetic goo, and viscous oil. Okay. Um, miserable Ray, thanks for the 21 months. Sassy Quatch, 212, thanks again for the uh, 15 months. Manny, thanks again for the 19. Ms. Magic, thanks for the 200 bits. I have been so enjoying Shadowlands, man. Fuck. What? Oh, I gotta keep killing stuff, I guess. Uh, I thought for sure that guy was going to get off his horse and fuck with me. Um, Mrs. Dr. Puppy, thank you for the seven months. 5-2-DZ, thanks for the 23, almost two years. Thanks for streaming. I enjoy playing uh, while mindlessly while listening to your stories back to lurking. Well, hey. Thank you for the uh, 23 months, almost two years worth, dude. Man. Makes me think of all those times growing up. You want to know how I know I was never the smartest kid in the world, chat? Um, my mom, when I was growing up, used to do this really nice thing where she would pull me uh, on a sled when we would go to the corner store. There's a corner store, maybe 15 minute walk from where we lived. And I had a GT snow racer and she would pull me on this GT snow race when we go to the store. Anyways, um, I, I still remember one day asking her to pull me on this GT snow racer to go to the corner store. And uh, she was like, Milton, I don't, I don't know. And I was like, I want you to pull me to the corner store on the GT snow racer. And I, I swear to God, she says, I'm like, Milton, you're nine. <laughs> you're heavy. I can't, I can't keep doing it. <laughs> And I remember thinking like, oh, I am kind of fucking old. I was like, I was like 160 pounds, like five foot nine, asking my mom to pull me on the fucking sled to the convenience store. You know, <laughs> I wasn't setting any, uh, any records for IQ in my age bracket. That's for sure. <laughs> I shit, I still do that when I'm 23. Mom, pull me. I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, but I feel like I am. But I don't know if I am. I'm just supposed to be collecting stuff from slimes. It's just that, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can I mount with this shit on my back? I can. All right. Even chat, uh, remember 99% of the love goes to all of us, 1% to Milton. Okay, well. <laughs> Don't lie, that was yesterday. 31 years old. Mom, pull me! So how do I just, do I just jump in here? Oh. Oh my God. It's five out of 30. Oh, okay. Maybe I just have to do two more. I see. It's an elite. Let's do it. I didn't le learn to read and write while I was eight. Mom was very worried about me for a while. Uh, do you mean like you were trying and just couldn't get it or you just didn't even want to learn it? Ooh. Ooh. This is not great. Oh boy. This might have been a mistake. You know what? I think I'm going to leave this guy now. Bye. I like the expansion, the expansion. I think I'd get back into it if they ever put it on console. It's a persistent rumor. Dude, if they put this fucking game on console, Aaron will ha never have a life again. 
I think the only thing holding Aaron back from loving WoW is that it's not on console yet. Z-Man, my fucking dude. How are you, buddy? It's great to see you, man. Uh, whoa, Connor K800. Thanks for the 900 bits. How does a druid cut his hair? Eclipse it. Uh, uh. Little pregnant Bill Dig, thanks for the 100 bits. Okay, ooh, boy. You know what? Hey, little pregnant building, appreciate the uh, joke. I'm gonna go ahead and not read that one out. <laughs> that one, that one even turns my ears red. Um, Mplate456, thanks for the 31 man months, man. It's good to see you here. Hey, how are you? Naughty slime, I'm gonna punish you for being so naughty. Doing fantastic, bud. Got myself a girlfriend, and we're doing amazing. That is fantastic to hear, dude. See, things are turning up, even in the midst of all this bullshit. What is this? Come here, mephitic goo. Empty plague bottle. What is this? The slime contained is ravenous and uncontrollable, devouring any party members, devouring party members and dealing damage to them. Only usable outdoors in the Shadowlands. Well, we gotta try that one out now. You need to be in Patty Mac land? What the fuck is Patty Mac land? I'm teaching my six year old grandkids cursive, and after seeing script, ask me where I learned to write in UFO language. <laughs> UFO language. That is fucking fantastic. That's what it is, isn't it? Let's be honest. Who the fuck learns cursive these days, right? Okay. Deadly night Nightshade Extract. <gasps> I get it. <laughs> it's a reference. Oh, it's a dread shade. Never mind. I was going to say it was a shout out to Nightmare Before Christmas. It's not. It's not that thing. Um... I remember being taught cursive uh, all throughout school and being told it would be important for college. I don't remember using cursive once in college. That's how they get you, man. Taxes, voting, understanding politics, critical thinking. Nah, you don't need to know any of that, but you gotta learn how the mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. That's important. <laughs> Since when was uh, Milton T. Pike one an alliance pleb? Since I went through puberty. <laughs> that was 50 years ago. What the fuck? That's illegal. <laughs> Neural Johnson says one of the tree becomes a bonsai and won't get too large and you can rent it for pops. I always have time for my brightest people. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Can we to grab my anima here and catalyze it? Grab my other anima and catalyze it? I'll do that for you. <laughs> Neural, maybe just be quiet. Maybe there's no more talking out of you. Potion form, give it to me. Chat, ask me your questions. Tell me about your lives, chat. 
what are your great overarching quandaries and mysteries of life? Let's explore them together. <laughs> you anima, what? One of the tree becomes a bonsai and won't get too large and you can rent it for pops. No, 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 no. Uh, I heard in the afternoon stream it was Milton's birthday. Happy birthday. No, it's not my, it's not my birthday. You've been lied to. Oh, there's like a slime lady who's talking to us. She looks like a glow in the glow in the dark doll. What do you think life will be like three years from now? Better. Better. I feel like um, I feel like we're still harboring some of the vestiges of uh, humanity's uh, lowly stamp, and uh, we're still carrying vestiges of, uh, of history with us. Like, if you think about it, if humans have been around for about, um, if humans have been around for about 150, 200,000 years in their current form, uh, well, anyways, if we've been around for 150, 200,000 years, how long has it been that we haven't just been solely focused on surviving? You know, how long has it been since the average lifespan was greater than 40 years? Only a couple hundred years. So uh, I feel like since we've started to stabilize some security in life, the rest of it has been doing these big, huge pendulum swings from one way to the other, from like, super right wing to super left wing to super right wing to super left wing and i think as the years go on we're gonna it's gonna slowly stop swinging so far side to side and eventually it won't be quite so dramatic um so i hope in three years time that we'll be closer to a middle it's my hope this year's been rough on the human condition let's say it yeah seriously that's the truth connor k800 thanks for the three months by the way um okay so empower the rune of insight and the rune of might okay let's go and do that well actually oh i see that's uh oh that's a dungeon well let's queue up for that because we'll need to do it anyways okay where's the other one wait plague fall Is that the wait, 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 wait? What about the other one? Whatever. I don't know. Fuck it. I don't care. I don't fucking care. Fuck it. I don't fuck it. I fuck it. I don't care. Um. Okay. Uh. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so that's sorry. That's the very long answer to what I think life will be like in three years. Do I have vivid dreams? Sometimes, sometimes they're super, super fucking vivid. Fuck this sickness, closing RCMP training camp and thus canceling my application that was six months in progress with them. Oh man, I am sorry. That actually happened to a family friend of uh, Aaron and I as well. Applied to RCMP, got fucked around by COVID and it ended up getting canceled. I'm sorry to hear that, man. You're not the only one. Are male ladybugs made fun of by other bugs? What do they look, do they look different? What do they look like? Serious question, as someone with a bioengineering degree, what do you think the answer to slowing oceanic acidification is? And is it already too late to save the coral reefs and other calcium shell-based uh, life? I don't think it's too late, but I think we would need to take a really serious look at um, uh, bioremediation. I think bioremediation is gonna be our only answer because we're gonna need something that's going to be like large scale, self-sustaining, um, and can ideally sort of feed off of what, all, what is already in the ocean, or if something like, if we can find a, some sort of filter organism that thrives uh, in conditions of excess iron, then you can salt the ocean with uh, iron shavings to create an artificial bloom and maybe draw some of it down that way. It's hard, it's gonna be fucking rough, that's for sure. Um, uh, Katie O'Keefe, thanks for the uh, raid, by the way. Welcome in. 
Okay, now. Oh, fucking Pog, dude. We don't need to see that. I don't want it to get all fucked up with my quest. Okay. What's my favorite Christmas song and or movie? My favorite Christmas song is probably uh, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Although I think that's also just called Merry Christmas. Um, or the Merry Christmas song or something like that. But yeah, that's probably my favorite. Favorite Christmas movie? Probably a Christmas story. It's classic, dude. Watching Ralphie get his face kicked down the slide. Milton T. Pike 1, you'd probably feel like he's making up words. I don't ever make up words. I never make up words. Not me. Um, using all these big terms right now, I mean, I just turned 30 over the weekend and I still feel like he's making up words. What the fuck? I don't, I'm not making up any words. One that I started thinking about, oh my God, can we just fucking get in the dungeon? Um, was that we never really live in the now. We always think about the past and the future, but never now. There's no tomorrow. There's just now. So why don't we live in it? Welcome. You have now begun your journey into the world of mindfulness. That is the entire realm of mindfulness. Mr. Bite making up words on my website. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Chat was making chat made up some words. A few of the mods made up some words. I didn't make up any words, any words. Nopers, not me. So it, someone in chat was probably responsible, but not me. Uh, Pixie Lee, what's up? Um, hey, Milty and chat, I've missed you so much. Uh, my life did a complete 180 and I've been gone for a while. Things are finally getting better though. Hey, well, I'm really glad to hear that things are getting better. You deserve for things to get better, okay? these halls will make quick work of you. Stradama's plague will soon be mine. How do I feel about the Muppets Christmas Carol? It's on Amazon. Oh, and it's a movie, presumably. Maybe we should watch it, man. That uh, might be nice to watch some Christmas movies together. It's so good, it's a classic. I wonder if it'll be available as a watch party. It's okay if you make up some words. Merriam-Webster will just add them to the dictionary within a year. Okay, listen here, fucko. I don't make up anything. I speak in pure scientific conjecture. All right? Don't you fucking forget it. Don't make me sick. Okay, we're good. We technically don't live in the now, always in the past. By the time stimulus hits our brain, it's already old. You never actually touch anything, just the electron field around it. Well, that depends on how you define living in the now, because your ability to perceive what now consists of is only defined by the limits of your awareness. How do you know that the stimulus reaching your mind's center for interpretation and awareness of that interpretation isn't where the now is actually happening. Hey, now nah, we're talking chat. <laughs> Wondering about jalapenos. Jalapenos. You mean jalapenos? This is the correct pronunciation. I wouldn't expect you to know that though. Great news, Milty tested negative for COVID. Here's hoping that everyone stays safe and has a great evening. Love you all. I have heard of some horror stories of a lot of people that I know testing positive for COVID lately. Scary times, man. Uh, Prime Minister basically came out and said that Alberta is looking pretty rough. But anyways, just everybody stay safe. We'll get through this. Jorblianos, Jalapenos? No, not Jalapenos. <laughs> That's not a thing. Time is a man-made construct. It doesn't exist. Well, I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of ways to approach that philosophically. Are you saying that in the absence of a conscious mind, that time wouldn't have an exi wouldn't exist, or are you saying that without humans, time wouldn't exist? Time is just a system used to demarcate the division of events. So it's sort of like saying temperature doesn't exist. Well, temperature is just a 
method for measuring the thermal activity. <laughs> Time is real, it's just relative. Ah. That's a thing, jalapeno flavored condoms really spices up the sex life. Tell me that's not a thing. How would anyone ever go for that? Wouldn't that do permanent damage to the inside of your, you know, business, wherever that goes? I'm specifically being um, ambiguous about that because I think anywhere that you could put a penis with a jalapeno condom on it would be bad. That would not be good in any, in any area. <laughs> the bussy? No, not the bussy. Get away from me with your jala jalapeno condoms. You kidding me? Time is my favorite relative. <laughs> you will be devoured. Oh. <laughs> you guys are funny. I mean, pepper do be tasty. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a, I'm a fan of spice. Your boy Milky likes his food spicy. I like a spicy food. clap dude i'm already such a fucking pog healer we're fine i actually don't know if i am chat we're gonna find out once we hit 60. i think torgast is gonna eat my lunch i thought wolf spiders were big enough then i should never meet you you're probably toxic what the fuck i read that as an actual chat comment neural johnson has officially passed the turing test i thought that was just a person in chat fuck <laughs> Fucking shit, I just read that as a comment. You need your own TED talk? I love these science aliens philosophical chats. I love having them too. I try not to bombard people with them because it could probably get a bit much after a while, but I do like diving deep. I do like diving deep into the nature of reality and who and what I am and making some philosophical musings. Your philosophical musing for tonight, chat is as follows we know so little about consciousness and i've sort of mentioned this once or twice before why are these guys dying so much sorry guys give me a second here oh boy oh Woo. okay Omega Beard, what's up? Who's your go-to streamer when you're not live? Honestly, I have a ton. I, I have a bunch. I'm, I'm following a bunch of people and I do like to cycle through a bunch of them. Um, I like to watch a lot of Djibouti show. I watch a lot of Kiboga. Um, I follow many, many different GTA role players and will uh, sometimes flick through their streams as well. The Sushi Dragon and Vari, uh, Will Shand, uh, Courage JD. I do watch a lot of Dr. Lupo, uh, Tim the Tapman. Uh, I have one of the first people I ever watched on Twitch and someone who I still enjoy to watch on Twitch is Lyric. Lyric has such a minimalist and super effective approach. Um, I think he's a great streamer. Will Shand is my boy, isn't he amazing? Uh, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around here, it doesn't make a sound. The answer is absolutely not. It never fell. Next time someone comes by to observe it, it'll be in fallen state. Ah, I see. So you're coming from the uh, position of quantum indecision as the governing force as to whether or not an, an event has occurred. Well, I guess, uh, I guess... Oh, there's so many directions to take that. <laughs> I guess if you think about it, technically speaking, if conscious observation causes a collapse of the probabilistic wave functions to determine something's existence or non-existence, then technically it's a nonsensical question to ask if the tree fell or not because the tree doesn't exist until it has a conscious observer. So if you say if a tree falls and no one is around to hear it doesn't make a sound, I say the tree doesn't exist in the first place until someone observes it. <laughs> 4D chess. Here's a deep dive. Sound can travel infinitely faster than light. 
When light passes through a medium, the denser, the more the light slows. Sound accelerates infinitely through infinitely denser medium. Uh, therefore, sound is the hardware uh, level of the universe that can explain quantum entanglement. That's a very interesting concept. That's a very interesting concept. So for anyone who's sort of wondering what the fuck we're talking about, there's some kind of interesting... Um, there's some interesting science behind the concepts of quantum entanglement and it goes something like this okay for anyone who doesn't know quantum entanglement it goes something like this let's say at the source of generation like uh the sun two a pair of photons are emitted and they're going in different directions and they can be as far apart as you want let's say that after you know a while some period of time they are 150 million light years apart okay 150 million light years apart give me a second to deal with these dumb dumbs god you want something done right you got to do it yourself chat oh oh no Okay. So, uh, anyways, um, let's say that they're 150 million light years apart, right? Uh, if you were to change the polarity or the spin of one, you will change the spin of the other. Um, even and it will it will happen instantly, even if they are 150 million light years apart. You flip one, you will flip the other instantaneously. The explanation for that, that's the, that's the response of quantum, quantum physicists. My favorite expression in quantum, uh, in quantum feeks, uh, quantum feeks, my favorite concept in quantum mechanics Who dares is that, um, That what, what they'll say, the expression, is they'll say anyone who claims to know about quantum or <laughs> claims to know how quantum mechanics work doesn't know how quantum mechanics work um, because it's so fucking weird. There are like five different seemingly, seemingly effective, seemingly sensical uh, theories that explain quantum mechanics that are completely different and result in completely different understandings of our natural universe. Of do um, so yeah, quantum mechanics, super fucking crazy. Have you heard of the great filter theory? If so, what do you think is scarier that we haven't reached the great filter yet or that we already passed it and might be truly alone in the galaxy or even the universe? I think the likelihood that we're alone in the universe is so extraordinarily low that um, I don't even really think it's worth much consideration. I always leave it open because I could be proven wrong, but I very much am of the opinion that um, the likelihood of life and intelligent life being elsewhere in the universe is so overwhelmingly strong that it's almost insane to not consider that if that makes sense might seem strongly worded but i mean oh my god dude these people stop stop oh oh god do i like guild wars 2 or wow better fuck that's a tough one. I really like both games. I don't know that I'd be able to pick a favorite between the two. I like them both for different reasons. Uh, but anyway, so I think that it's very unlikely that we haven't, that we're alone in the universe, but I don't think that that means that we'll necessarily ever find out if there's someone else out there because it could be that we will destroy ourselves before an intelligent life form decides to make itself known to us. Maybe there's intelligent life watching us right now and going, I don't know what the fuck these humans are doing. I don't know what they have planned, but they definitely seem far too risky to make contact with right now. Maybe we'll try again in 5,000 years, and maybe in 5,000 years, we'll no longer be here. You know what I mean? Why do you say that something exists only when it is observable? Well, I was being a little bit obtuse, but basically there's a, an experiment called the double slit experiment. 
And the double slit experiment basically suggests that if you were to shine uh, a beam of light at uh, a board and on the board, there were incredibly small holes uh, and you were to see what the light was doing on the other side of that board with the little holes in it before an observation is made the 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 path of the photon after the slit exists as like a cloud like a probability cloud but only once an observer makes the observation um it looks like a finite point and uh the thing that's really fucking weird about that is it has some pretty bizarre implications that not a lot of people think about and these implications include if if making the con the the you know the the um if making the conscious observation determines the state of the photon and therefore determines anything it ever could have been because once you make that observation there's no evidence that it ever was any other way all you have is the evidence that it's in its finite form you don't you'll have no idea what else it could have been if that's the case who's to say that everything we are living right now isn't simply a conscious determination made by some someone or something else what's to say that everything governing our entire lives is not simply the result of an observation that was already made nothing is up to us chat we have no free will that's what it all boils down to <laughs> this is this is probably pretty heavy to go into on a tuesday night but listen your boy milty had a little bit of the lightning lettuce okay <laughs> software has to load <laughs> Um, to be fair, the observable universe is just that, what we can observe. We don't know what else is out there. Combined with how everything is moving at light speed, we'd never be able to reach certain distances because of the constant expansion of the universe. With our current tech, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Like Horton Hears a Who, yeah. Not, not dissimilar from Horton Hears a Who. Pretty much. Oh. Is this a boss? This is a boss. Sorry for all the macabre questions. So here's a little easier one. I'm not even gonna finish that. I saw you post it earlier and I intentionally didn't read it and I'm going to do that again. I refuse. I refuse. You listen to me, okay? We're here for positive vibes and smiles only. I will not read that. Uh, are you saying the photon passed the whole... Wait, hold on. Um, are you saying the photon passed the hole in that concept is finite? Uh, I'm saying that its destination is finite or the path that you see that it has taken is finite. You will never make a conscious observation of an electron passing through the double slit experiment and see it as a field. You will only ever see it as a, a cloud of probabilistic options. If that makes sense. I don't even know if it makes sense to me. What am I supposed to be doing in here? Ah, Margrave Stra Stradama's plasm gotta suck up that plasm chat the idea of uh quantum instantaneous travel man that would be uh would that even be probable to squishy human life well there's a lot of interesting theories in case anyone doesn't know i'll give you the theory on how on the sort of consensus opinion on how conventional UFOs likely operate. So, um, oh, I see, they, he wants us to be there, okay. Um, the idea is that you have a really advanced, oh, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's just out there dying by himself. <laughs> uh, anyways, the idea of, um, how, uh, how an advanced spaceship would work is it has a reactor that that uh, utilizes an extremely heavy element. It irradiates that extremely heavy element and uh, in, in radiating it, what it does is, um, the concept is that the molecule is so tightly compacted that there's an emission of a yet, a yet 
unknown gravity force that can be manipulatable by using a reactor to excite this bit of the gravitational field that extends beyond the molecule. And doing that, and doing it with enough energy, allows a spacecraft to literally create a fold in space-time directly in front of, um, directly in front of the spacecraft. And uh, by doing so, it can simply go through space-time. Two points, no matter how far away they were, it could be 200 million light years away, and just pinching the two areas together and going through it would allow instantaneous travel. If that's possible, if it's possible for a, a, a spacecraft to um, create a gravitational field around it, then it shouldn't be an issue that humans are um, squishy. But uh, that's just my hypothesis. What do I know at the end of the day? Artesian, Artesian Builds is in here. What is up? Wow, it's for nerds. Just don't tell them the founders of Artesian played WoW together. Fuck, listen, this is what this machine was made for. Okay, Artesian, chat. If you guys don't know, you can put exclamation PC into chat to check out the computer that I'm playing on right now, which was brought to you. High-end graphical power brought to you by my friends at Artesian Builds. They put together this incredible machine with its Rockin' 3080. And uh, if you guys are looking to upgrade your system, seriously, consider Artesian Builds. They're incredible, man. Sponsor friend, yeah, exactly. Ooh, ooh. Yep, I thought that would be coming for me. Damn it, chat! F word. He's repeating things I said, you fuck. Why is Neural Johnson now saying that? Back when I had WoW, when I played WoW, I had a Pentium. I got a solid 22 frames. Yeah, that sounds like about what I got too. <laughs> now I've got to fucking try to find my way back there again. Damn it, shit, man. Whoops. Have you heard of the, uh, have you heard of last Thursdayism? Basically the concept that the universe could have been created last Thursday in its current state, including all the memories that we think is history. Personally, I don't buy it. The universe was definitely created on a Wednesday. Are you kidding me? If 2020 has anything to say about anything, the universe was created on a fucking Monday. The universe was created yesterday and uh, the creating intelligence decided to have the creation moment come in right at the end of uh, our memories of 2020 so that everything afterwards seems like bliss. Who knows, chat, maybe we're entering paradise. <laughs> Neural Johnson's already proud member of the Bet Squad. You should be proud, I'm not. I'm not proud at all, okay? <laughs> it was created on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Fuck. There's a possible method of space travel that has all kinds of reasons why it can't work right now called an Alcubi an Alcubier drive that is theoretically possible method of FTL travel. The only problem is that it would take converting all the mass of Jupiter directly into energy to possibly work. Fuck a duck, man. Space travel's cool and all, but was that a mech or something? Oh yeah, you like my mount? That's my mount, dude. You like that? What even are the mounts and such in this game anymore? Holy cow. <laughs> dive and then revive <laughs> and then he left the group oh no oops that's a mount yeah that is a fucking mount you bet it is um what was the first game you ever played that uh story really stuck with you for example the first um the first bioshock was the first time i really sat down after finishing the game and thought about the story that is a fucking excellent question chat we'll circle back down to we'll circle back to the space concept because i want to talk to you guys about that about some news that will possibly be coming out soon um but before we do that we got to do two things okay we got to repair our stuff and also fix that and we have to have a stretch break okay chat if you guys have been sitting for the last hour and 44 seconds i want you guys to get your asses up do a little stretch it's good for your body okay chat have a little stretch. I'm gonna do the same thing and I'll be right back, chat, okay? 
and uh and we'll continue milton we all know the news is that you are traveling to space in real life okay artesian did you know that i made it into the top 25 percent of the selection pool when nasa was looking for two canadian astronauts top 25 percent mind you that means that a thousand people were more qualified than me but whatever bro okay i'll be right back chat no smoking Okay. Good news, guys. I just got off the phone with Artesian Builds, and they said that if nobody smoked in this channel while I was gone, that everybody gets a 3090. Was there people smoking in chat? Oh, f Artesian, could you go ahead and cancel the... Uh, could you do me a favor and cancel the 3090s? It looks like people were smoking. Could you cancel the 3090s that we had talked about everybody getting? Yep, cancelled, okay. Guys, I wish it didn't have to go that way, chat, but, you know, this is the tackiest music I think I've heard in a very long time. Is there, like, a piano Christmas music? What is this? Classic Christmas. I don't recognize any of these songs. Traditional Christmas. Oh. Hey, that sounds better. Okay, instead, they'll all just get one of those Pascal GPU, GPU USBs. <laughs> and so it should be. The way that it should be. <laughs> I don't want to have to fight you, but those are fighting words. Hey, I didn't make the decision, okay? You guys made the decision. You did. Where am I turning this in? Ah, right there. Ah! State your intent. Okay. Plague watch it is. <laughs> Actually, though, if anyone has one of those USBs, <laughs> I'm contacting my uh, my union representative. Don't contact them. What is your favorite movie about space or aliens? Okay, yes. So I'm gonna answer that one first. I'm gonna answer that one first. Phoenix Gem 22. What is your favorite movie about space or aliens, or which one do you believe to be the most accurate? Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix Gem. When you ask that question, do you mean like which documentary or which like work of fiction? Because listen, no, don't yappers me. I'm telling you right now that the movie Interstellar is an excellent film. It is an excellent film. And I know that some people have some issue with some of the science, but you, ha you have to expect, you have to suspend some of your expectation of realism in order to enjoy a work of fiction. But it is genuinely... An incredible fucking movie work of fiction yeah so i would say interstellar i'd say interstellar is my numero uno filmo just hit 16 just need to finish the storyline tomorrow dude congrats good work man i can't sleep just go to sleep forehead um 
but yeah so i would say i think interstellar is probably my favorite space film and i think it's probably the most realistic space film the martian was pretty good um but i would choose um i would choose interstellar you have to suspend your view of reality to enjoy fiction lies <laughs> all right no one even thinking that 2001 exists in here i'm not gonna lie i know this is gonna seem this is gonna seem very controversial i um can't stand um 2001 space odyssey i tried to watch the first hour of it a number of times and it was so fucking boring i kept on turning it off i couldn't sit through it man um they even wrote papers about the black hole physics with interstellar yeah i thought they did like the way that they the way that they pictured the uh the like visually represented the 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 anomaly the gravitational anomaly was apparently very uh accurate okay so this this uh the fucking christmas music that we're listening to that's supposed to be like really nice and relaxing is actually ending up sounding more like uh something from a fucking little kids go to sleep cassette tape so i oh, will see if we can't find something a little bit a little bit easier on the ears uh holiday season uh don't recognize any of those winter holiday and i just wanted to like christmas christmas piano Uh, well, peaceful Christmas classics. Well, that sounds nice. There we go. That's better. But Neural Johnson's hooked on the NFL player topic, man. He's addicted. You gotta let go. Um, okay, so chat, so I would like to ask you guys that question. Tell me all of your secrets, chat. Tell me, tell me everything. Tell me, chat, my question for you. Uh, what was the first game whose storyline you really remember? Like, the first time in your life that you, you played through a game with a storyline and then thought, like, holy fuck. Like, that was a story. Halo. Oh, Halo. KOTOR? KOTOR was great. Halo. Quite a few, a, a number of people saying Halo. Karazhan. Earthbound. Red Dead Redemption 1. I think Red Dead 1 might be my answer. Dead Space or Halo? Interesting. Same Halo. Halo might be mine too. Halo might be mine too, honestly. I'm trying to think if anything else came before that. Shadow Man had an interesting story, but the one that really stuck with me, I feel like I gotta say Red Dead 1. The Matrix? The Matrix game? We're talking games. Hunt the Gods, video games. Wow. Halo or Morrowind on original Xbox. Did you beat um, original Morrowind? That's one of the games that I don't think TechSmith has ever beaten. From strife comes opportunity. Draka abandons us and then demands um, loyalty. Majora's Mask. Red Dead 1 was the first game to make me cry like a baby. Dude, I won't lie. There were some parts that were for hard for me to swallow. You want to know what I thought was really interesting about... Um, actually, you know what? Fable 2. Uh, I, will, I will say this in as unspoilery of a way as possible, okay? I'm pretty sure this is Fable 2 and not Fable 3. Is Fable 2 with the one... Is Fable 2 the one with the guy who is obsessed with... Um, being invulnerable is that fable 2 yeah okay so um this might be a little spoilery for anyone who hasn't played through it so just be aware for the next maybe 60 to 90 seconds you might get some spoilers but basically what i appreciated about it i actually was on my way to being super pissed off about the way the game ended because uh when i got to the last boss fight and went through the whole encounter and all the rest um 
uh, before I had a chance to attack this guy who was on this long soliloquy about like, well, my grand vision and I could unlock the key to immortality and blah, 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 blah. One of your party members, this dude who is super uh, snooty and shitty, they, they, like carefree the entire time, shoots the last boss in the face and goes, oh, I never thought he'd shut up. And I remember, I remember staring at the fucking TV and being like, what? I just played through an entire fucking game and you just killed the fucking last boss right in front of me. And I remember being livid and I was so, I was so angry. Here I am fucking 13 years old or whatever. <laughs> I went to go on gamefacts.com as in game frequently asked questions, gamefacts.com to write like a, an angry post about, I can't believe, I can't believe Fable 2 did this to me. And one of the first, um, one of the first posts I saw was from a guy um, saying, like, explaining his take on the last, uh, on the last encounter there, and he said that he thought it was great and that it was the most poetic end to the boss possible because he was this dude who dedicated, sacrificed everything and everyone else to try to be invulnerable, and at the end of the day, he was just shot in the face by a guy who didn't give a fuck, and I was like, huh. I had never thought of it like that before. And it totally changed my perspective on that, uh, on that component of the story. Anyways, um, so I, that, and that predated Red Dead 1, because for me, Red Dead 1, I think my favorite part of Red Dead 1, I thought the whole story was really good, minus having to play Jack afterwards. God, that guy was such a dick. Uh, anyways. Uh, and stare, and snare, um, Mephiles, okay. Um, my favorite part about Red Dead 1, I liked the ending, I hated having to play his fucking stupid goddamn Jack, or, uh, but uh, anyways, um, sorry, I'm trying to do so many things at once. One of the stories that I thought was the greatest out of Red Dead 1 was the story of, um, <laughs> get fricked, was the story of The Stranger. Do you guys remember the story of The Stranger? It was just literally a, literally an NPC called The Stranger. And I don't even think he has a name. I think people just started colloquially referring to him as The Stranger. And he was a dude that would show up randomly throughout the game and he would get you to make a moral decision. Like, um, uh, stop a man from cheating on his wife at a bar in like thieves landing or give him money to do so and then the stranger would respond uh with whatever his answer was and um anyways uh what i thought was so crazy was that towards the end of the game once again spoilers for red dead one if you haven't played it through but towards the end of the game when you're meeting the stranger one of the things that i think is crazy is uh one of the last scenes that you see with this stranger, and it comes at about 80% of the way through the storyline, it's the last time you see him. When you see him, he's patting down the dirt on top of a hill, and he says, this spot looks perfect, or something like that. And then he has this conversation with uh, John Marston, and uh, and they, they go back and forth for a while, and they're very clearly not getting along, and they end the conversation with John saying, uh, God damn you. Or I think he just says, damn you. And the guy turns around and says, many have. And then when the camera pans over again, the guy's gone, like he's just vanished. Anyways, the part of the hill that the guy was patting the dirt down ended up being where John and his wife were buried. That was, f and that fucking blew my mind. As soon as the game ended and it showed their fucking, their uh, headstones on the hill, right where the stranger had been patting the dirt, my fucking head went, that was fucking wild. But I would also say that uh, another uh, another one of my um, favorite story-based games was also a Bioshock game, but it was Bioshock Infinite. I thought Bioshock Infinite was like transcendent, man. I was not expecting that storyline at all. This was before I got into like watching videos about games or watching streamers or anything. So when I bought Bioshock Infinite, I had no fucking clue what to expect. And when you're when you're in that first area and you really understand the first turn in um, in tone, like when you understand, oh, this is what this place is about. I remember the feeling I had and I just thought, holy shit, man. Ken Levine is a genius. Is that the one who wrote the story? 
Um, I'm eating fish curry and rice as a midnight snack. Dude, that's a stinky fucking snack. <laughs> Came in the stream at the right time. I just got the Bioshock collection. Dude, I love those games, man. We have so many games that we got to play through right now, but I would like to eventually work my way around playing through the Bioshock games on the stream. The ending of Infinite made me research everything. Yeah, well, isn't it fucking crazy, dude? I'm telling you, man. Telling you, dude. Where is this one supposed to be? Oh, I see. Stop tracking. Okay. Ouch. Did you ever play the DLC to Bioshock Infinite? I don't even know if I knew that they had any DLC. Now I'm fucking, now I'm intrigued. Uh, I would love to play through that. I'm waiting, uh, one of the game games that I'm really excited about is Outlast 3 with a co-op. So Techsmith and I can play. I'm very stoked about that. That was another game that I thought had very good writing. I was very impressed with the writing in, um, uh, Outlast, both the Outlast games. Pretty dark, but pretty good. Wait, there's co-op? Yep. Neural told us to be conscious. Ooh. Uh, 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 ee, ee. Ooh. What is going on with Neural? <laughs> Don't like that. Nope. <laughs> then the OG Beepers Bros can uh, meet the new Beepers Bros. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay. Well, then we'll just take you home and let them turn you into fucking slop or whatever. Have you ever played Sensua's Sacrifice? I haven't, but I really want to, Nate Boss. Look, I've heard really good things. Is this supposed to represent a person who is, like, having a schizophrenic break or something like that? I forget. They told me that it's it's about, like, a person with with a commonly known mental health condition, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, Okay. Uh, Sense with Sacrifice in VR is amazing. Does it have VR for uh, PC? Because I'd fucking... Uh, I would fucking play that on stream. Before they went off the rails, and it's a shame that they lost the code to it, Saints Row 2 was a great game that should have been remade. Dude. Saints Row was a fantastic series. In my opinion, the only thing that they really did wrong was... Um, the only real mistake that they made was in shit talking GTA 4. They should have just allowed the two games to stand on their own, but like, what do you want to do in a game? Do you want to sit on a couch and watch a TV in the game? Or do you want to crowd surf and blah blah blah? And I thought, uh that was a that was a stupid decision. Make that unnecessarily more competitive than it needed to be. GTA 4 was so great. GTA 4 had a fucking fantastic storyline. I felt so empty, man. I felt so empty at the end of that game. No matter what decision you made, I still felt fucking empty. Oh, we should play through that game too. I just want to play through every game with you guys. Re-experience all my game memories. Hey, Nico! <laughs> Nico, cousin! It's your cousin Roman. Do you want to go bowling? <laughs> <laughs> the only mistake Saints Row made was don't want to close my eyes. Wait, what? I don't know if I know that part. Oh, they're in, they're interrogating this guy now. Okay. The more you know about Gachi W, what is Neural talking about? What the fuck? You should check out the trailer for Hellblade 2, Sensua's Saga. Ooh, interesting. Best line in GTA 4 is this is for Roman. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. Yeah, I had a lot of great moments, man. A game that I feel like was super fucked up, but also super fun was Manhunt. I I played the shit out of Manhunt, man. I loved that fucking game. I wish they remade that game. Okay. Three depleted crystals fractured. All right. 
the start of Saints Row 4 has your character jump onto a nuke as don't want to miss a thing starts playing and then you become the president of the United States. Oh yeah, dude. Oh my God. Fuck. <laughs> I wish it had worked because I would still love to play through that game with tech on stream with you guys. Ever played Last of Us? I haven't played either Last of Us or um, the second one, but... Um, I always feel like the games are like Bird Box with Sandra Bullock. Is that what the game is like? Gruff, rough and gruff main character who is reserved with their feelings, but trying to get a group of st stupid children through a fucking apocalypse. Far away. Uh, what about Uncharted? I've actually never played Uncharted, but I want to. Yeah, but Last of Us is actually good. Uh, I, I, I want to make it. I want to make it clear. I'm not shit talking the game. I'm not trying to make it sound like the game is stupid. I thought, uh, I thought the, um, I thought Bird Box was kind of funny, but uh, I don't. I'm not trying to shit talk the story of uh, The Last of Us because I've heard really good things. Ritual drafts. Oh, I see. You will fuel our rituals. Oh, I thought that was a player, and I was like, well, I don't want to fuck. I don't want to hit that player. Now. Nah. It's an NPC. See ya. Thanks, bro. I think text exact words were, I'd rather repeatedly smash my dick between two bricks than play this game. Yup, that, that, that sounds like his exact response to playing that game. Uh, you haven't played The Last of Us Part 2? I worked on that one. I can't even, did you actually, Straws? You worked on The Last of Us Part 2? I didn't even play through the fucking first one, man. Listen. It's the way it is, okay? Have I played Kingdom Hearts? I haven't played Kingdom Hearts, but I've seen TechSmith play it. He loved it. He loved those games. If you like the dystopian zombie stuff, The Last of Us is by far one of the best stories out there. Interesting. Okay. Um. <laughs> hey, good news. Once in three years, you get your PS5. I believe Uncharted is one of the free games that you get. Oh, Pog, dude. <laughs> Sick. Oh, I see. I got to drain from corpses. None shall stop us. Okay, I can do that. I also feel bad for how you and Tech started uh, on Dead Space with the third game, which is the absolute worst one. It might be co-op, but that same co-op takes everything from the horror experience. Oh, no, that wasn't my start with, um, with Dead Space. I played and enjoyed the first game. My mistake was to try to play the PC port a few years later. It was bad. It was bad. But was bad. It was not great. Um, I cried before in Last of Us, but honestly, I wouldn't be completely. I wouldn't be completely complete without my daily cry, anyways. Hey, there you go. Live through it, man. Hey, Kitsuki, how you doing, dude? I am fucking loving um, Shadowlands so far. Are you enjoying it, Kitsuki? I'm having a fucking blast. Very much, very much enjoying. Very pog, many wow. So I can get that body too? Oh, that's kind of nice. Okay. Christmas music, Pago. Welcome to planet Earth where people are allowed to listen to things a month before the holiday. Fuck face. It is one month before Christmas. It is perfectly acceptable to play Christmas music now. All right, motherfucker. Milton, read to the bot to start using emotes. What the fuck? Neural, neural dickhead. I'm out of range. Come here. Which chapter am I on? Oh, I wish I could tell you, Screaming Violet. I have no fucking clue <laughs> I, I've, I have don't, I don't know I think the I think the second one I think 
Um, okay. Got a couple of bodies there. I really want to hit 58, but I don't know if that's feasible. The grind is slowing down now. Harder and harder to keep getting levels. Uh, open your map and then tab, f then the tab for quests that is at the top. Chapter four out of seven. That's not bad, getting through it. How many zones are there to go through? Fucking four, five, six maybe. A lot, a lot of different stories to go through. That's okay. Crispo, crispy Crispo, how you doing, man? The last three levels were always the hardest during expansions. Yep, that's accurate. Oh boy, that hurt. Didn't like that. Jesus. All right, see you, dickheads. Bye. I have about 80 hours in Valhalla. I can't wait to watch you stream this awesome game, dude. I, I have been working on something, chat. So, chat, I don't know if you know this, but in the game, you can get Thor's full set of armor and Mjolnir Thor's hammer, but you have to do some of the absolute most mind-bogglingly difficult boss fights in order to get it it's crazy so i've been stuck on uh i've been stuck on get trying to get the second piece of armor for a long time so we'll have to do some struggle streams in a while patty mac land fucking patty mac land bro ah oh, this is what i was looking for You're a bit over leveled for Maldrax. We'll get an XP reduction, so I recommend do it just doing the story quest for now. That's actually a great point. That is actually a really good point. Um, how do I just focus on the story? How do I tell what is just like story quests versus just side quests? I don't know, actually know if I know by focusing forehead on what on what though focus on what what way story quests are the one with the banner so these are all three story quests then ah uh, okay so all all of these are are good then gotcha i i'm tracking i got gotcha, you chat roger that Chonky quest emblems or story? Roger. I'm tracking. I'm following. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Ooh. Cranky. Have you played any of the uh, South Park games? They are hilarious. You know, I heard so many things about the fractured butthole, um, but I didn't actually ever end up playing any of the games. Um, I heard really good things though. I'm stuck in one of the caves because uh, one of the boss's levels being too high to get one of the pieces of his armor. Yeah, it's tricky, man. It's fucking tricky, right? You're making me want to resub, but I'm moving into my newly constructed uh, house next month. You mean resubscribe to WoW? He's learning, chat. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> hey, Jamaica Jan. Thanks for the year, dude. Thanks for coming back for a year. Drew Tunes, thanks for the eight months. I appreciate you. Lazarus, 1969, thanks for the 23 months Says Final Fantasy VII. I do remember Final Fantasy VII fucking me up. That's the one with Titus, right? I didn't even play it. I just watched my brother play it. It still fucked me up. Oh yeah, maybe I should use my crystal on this guy too. 
Um, Kaya Leash, thank you for the eight months. By the way, we're having a baby next month. Decibel, we just had a baby. What should we name it? You choose the name, okay? I will just agree arbitrarily with anything that you pick. So pick well, pick wisely. Get fricked. Um, I was referring to resubbing to WoW. Ah, okay. Uh, how many people have recently wished you a happy Thanksgiving, Milton? Well, hopefully zero because I'm Canadian and it's not Thanksgiving for me. So if you wish me a happy Thanksgiving, I would just be offended and upset. Is that a fucking dead player? Yep. Rip. Sucks to suck, dude. Uh, another question. Which of the three is the best Indiana Jones movie? Chat, are you ready for this? Please. Everybody, please remove your hands away from your unsubscribe button. I've never seen a single Indiana Jones movie. Never seen a single one. And I'm a huge cinephile. I watch tons and tons and tons of movies. I have never seen, I'm not, and I'm not joking. I'm not memeing. I'm not just trying to be edgy. I'm serious. I've never seen a single fucking Indiana Jones movie. Isn't that fucking wild? I don't even have a good excuse for it because I love Harrison Ford and I've heard that they're great movies. Is there any particular way that I should or shouldn't watch them? I see people saying watch, watch the first and third movies. Should I skip the second one or what? Just trying to sneak in and get your little bloop. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, watch one and three. The fourth one doesn't exist. Oh, is there a fourth one? There are only three of them. I see a lot of people very angrily insisting that uh, <laughs> the first three are the only three that exist. Why Why is the fourth one so bad? If you can put it in non-spoilery terms for someone who hasn't seen the movies, what is it about the fourth one that is so bad? Four isn't real. <laughs> we don't recognize the fourth. What is it? Bad twist ending. Oh no. Oh no. Oh God. Was that the one that like just came out somewhat recently? Like what year did the most recent one come out? I thought it was somewhat recent. What do you desire? Observe everything. Okay. I will not be tried. Prepare the ritual. Our rules must be convincing. Um four was just bad story wise that's so interesting 2008 fuck that's crazy one to three if you want to be indiana jones in movie four he's just sad oh god dude that's like uh you know you know what i feel i feel like i feel like um i feel like harrison ford in the fourth uh <laughs> in the fourth goddamn um Indiana Jones movie is the same energy as Rambo in like the seventh Rambo movie. He's like 76 years old. People are coming up to him asking him for help with mercenary work and he's hooked up to an oxygen tank and shit. Dude, leave him alone, man. Are you kidding me? The guy's 82 and you're asking like, listen, I need you to in in infiltrate a top security Mexican fucking cartel. And he's like, ah, ah. <laughs> so old. Oh, that's too bad. As a side note, I did actually watch the most recent Rambo movie, and truth be told, it's actually pretty fucking good. Chat, is there a way to handle drug addiction as a movie set in space rather than a space movie? Jesus, man. Take it easy. Um. Wow. That's fucking cool. Sorry. Oh yes, chat. Now, hold on. We need to circle back for a minute here, okay? We need to circle back for a minute, chat. Because I need to tell you guys about something that hopefully if it happens, you guys will be able to show up in chat and say, ooh, ooh, Milty Daddy, we heard it first from you. Hold on. 
Now we lower Morbitan to his due. Okay. Master, who our preparations are creepy. We await your arrival. Finally, the power our new Baron promise shall now No! The ritual it is ruined! Mephiles! You incompetent fool! Huh? It is you who are the fool, Morbitan. Damn, dude. And your folly has brought your demise. Wicked spy! Curse you! And your fallen Monka, dude. Okay, so the news that I want you guys to know so that you can say, ooh, ooh, wow, daddy Milty told me before anyone else did. Uh, a lot of people in the uh, UFO world are expecting another um, release of information from the United States government on December 2nd chat. So basically in one week. And it's actually, there's a there's a, some interesting and concerning backstory behind it. So they're expecting the, the um, declassification of a picture, an aerial photograph of a triangle shaped UFO. And this is apparently verified by the United States government and military intelligence agencies, but it's a contentious topic in the, um, in the UFO world because um, uh, the person who basically leaked this information did so of his own volition without sort of running it by anybody. And now the uh, suspicion is that because he did that, um, the United States government is going to be incredibly reluctant to ever reveal any more information about anything ever. So basically people are expecting them to just drop this photo and say, yes, it's real. And then just totally shut down. But anyways, we'll see if, uh, if it's true, then, um, on December 2nd, you guys will see the declassification of a UFO photo. We'll see. Don't expect these releases on a weekly basis though. No, wait, don't they expect these releases on a weekly basis, though? It's starting to sound like religious nuts predicting the end of the world every year. No, uh, and if you, look to, if you look at the progress that has been made in the world of um, UFOlogy, UFOlogy, in the last year, there's been a marked uptick in the number of confirmed sightings, uh, declassifications, uh, people talking at a governmental level about um, more disclosure. It is a unique year. Imagine the president releasing everything as a last hurrah. Dude. I don't even know what we would do. I can't even imagine what would happen to the world if the United States just suddenly released all of their information about UFOs. It would be fucking wild. That's the same day my divorce is final. Good news twice for me. Hey, how about that? <laughs> it feels weird to celebrate that, but I'll still do it. Um, okay, chat. Two questions for you. First question, what is the first movie that you ever remember crying at? It's a sad question, but don't worry, we'll follow it up with a happy one. First movie that you ever uh, you ever cried at? Gladiator? Dude, that's a sad fucking movie, man. Fucking Narnia, dude. Narnia also is a fucking sad movie. Marley and Me? Um... None, no feelings. Liar. Liar. Saving Private Ryan. Oh my god, dude. I never cried to any movie. Liar. Liar. <laughs> Godzilla 1985. I was like five and I thought Godzilla died going into a volcano at the end. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so thoughtful, man. Blindside upgrade. Um, Forrest Gump, the ending got me. Oh, dude, don't even get me started on Forrest Gump. 
the last samurai i was 13 at the time and the end had me bawling in the movies dude always enough that is definitely a movie that still to this day gets me choked up the last samurai is an excellent excellent fucking film return to the house of the chosen okay as you come on baroness Man, prices have gone up. One gold to travel from here to here. Uh, yeah, The Last Samurai made me fucking, made me, uh, made me pretty teary. For me, I, and this is so stupid, but it's true because I think I watched this movie. Um, oh, no, hold on. Well, I guess I should clarify. Cried because it was sad. Probably Armageddon with Bruce Willis. Dude, I, I don't give a fuck who you are. The ending of... Armageddon is heart-wrenching. Um, so that was one. Oh no, uh, I think the first one for me was probably um, Fly Away Home. Dude, why would you ever allow a child to watch that movie? It is so fucking heart-wrenching. I think uh, Fly Away Home was probably the first one for me. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, movies that made me cry out of fear out of out of complete and utter fear were um all dogs go to heaven when the devil shows up was the scariest thing i've ever seen in my life no child should ever watch that and uh, the brave little toaster when uh, the air conditioner goes fucking nuts cried like a fucking like my life was over man it's terrifying terrifying <laughs> You don't think I know what's going on in here? It's a conspiracy, and every one of you low wants is in on it. It's not my fault. Of my fault, he couldn't reach my buttocks. It's not my fault. I'm stuck in this wall. You think I want to be stuck in this stupid wall? It's my function. It explodes into sparks. Wept like a fucking wept like a fucking baby. Terrified, dude. Um. But uh, movies that made me cry for being sad, probably Armageddon was a big one. Armageddon was a big one. Saving Private Ryan, definitely. I made the mistake of watching The Notebook with my wife when we first started dating, and she was holding me as I was crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, dude. Good. Hey, you got to do that. Hey, listen, don't don't let that bother you because it was like my third date with Aaron that I got so drunk that I threw up everywhere and like shit my pants and fell asleep was still dressed face down diagonally across her bed and forced her to sleep in the guest room because I was unwake upable. So, hey, you know, you didn't do that. <laughs> you got that going for you at the very least. It was not great. It was not. It was not. I was talking to her about that the other day. I was like, what did you think? Because I'm not someone who drinks. I drink maybe, I maybe average a drink of alcohol every 12 months, maybe 18 months. I don't drink. I don't like the taste of alcohol. I don't like being drunk. Now, Jazz Cabbage on the other side, your boy Milty is a connoisseur. Alcohol, not so much. So I said, what did you think when I got so fucking so unbelievably plastered that i had to ask you to pull over three times on the way home to throw up and then i passed out on your bed after trying to throw my fucking watch in the garbage and you had to sleep in the oh um clizian just dropped me a hundred and fifty thousand gold <laughs> wow um oh my god clizian if you're out there right now i fucking love you if you're not out there right now i will thank you the next time i see you oh my god dude streamer loot listen i mean all i'm saying is um all i'm saying is i don't know if it's a great idea to uh give that kind of cash to streamers because uh 
they probably won't appreciate it and they might not come back and play the game. Klezian, if you're watching this in a VOD, I'm just memeing because some fucking idiot tried to prevent me from getting a legendary weapon in Guild Wars 2 by saying some stupid shit like that. You do you, I guess. <laughs> wow, that was fucking crazy. That's ridiculous. 150,000 gold. Holy fuck. Um, a thousand gold is about 20 bucks. Is that true? Jesus. No way. There's no way that that's true. What? Uh, there was an absolutely horrifying scene in the Brave Little Toaster when the vacuum cleaner drops his friends off a waterfall after failing to be strong enough to save them. It's just dead silence, no music, him sitting there into contemplation as to what just happened. How fucked up is that? Who the fuck wrote the scripts for these kids' movies, man? This shit is dark. What the fuck? What is, I guess, honestly, I, I swear, dude. I swear, you have to, um... I, like Disney movies must be written in such a way that they're supposed to convey a message to children like they're supposed to teach them about life because I was just watching Tangled with Aaron like last week and this is all about like a psychotic murderous overbearing mother trying to keep her illegitimate child held prisoner in a fucking building and killing anybody who gets in the way like how how is that Designed for kids. That's heavy for me, and I'm 31. I'm almost 32. No one ever said that they were kids' movies? I guess. Fair enough. Did you see Inside Out? That movie ruined me. No, I actually didn't see Inside Out. I tried watching a bit of it, but I had to stop halfway through. Um, what movie made you laugh inappropriately? For me, Titanic. While others were crying over the ship going down and the deaths, I was laughing at the guy who bounced off the propeller, asking myself, why is this in here? Um, <laughs> for me, probably um, in Lord of the Rings, when uh, the, the dude, the crazy dude, sets himself on fire and runs off the end of that huge tall tower, um... Me and my friend couldn't stop laughing because some dude that was sitting next to us must have been out of his mind on mushrooms or something. Because as this dude's falling off the edge of the tower, this guy sitting two seats away from us really loudly goes, Whoa! That would totally be me. <laughs> I could not. I was laughing so hard, dude. I couldn't stop. I was, I was inconsolable for like 10 minutes. I was laughing so goddamn hard. <laughs> Dude, the never-ending story with Artax. Right? Who does that to people, War and Peace? That's what I'm talking about. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> Rolling back to Indiana Jones as I had to step away for work. I'm fairly confident that you will enjoy it as the first movie is made by George Lucas. Between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, they have very similar quality. Okay. That is good to know. I'm into that. I'm into it, dude. Oh, cool. We get to set up another pillar to go to the Maw. That's pretty fucking pog. I cracked up during Insidious. I thought the demon's face was so stupid and I sounded nuts in the theater. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, chat. Um, the, uh, the next question that I have for you. So we, we talked about the movies that made you cry. What movie made you, like what's the first movie that you remember watching that made you laugh like you've never laughed during a movie? What movie made you laugh like you have never fucking laughed in your life? This ain't gotta go down. Jump into the soul pillar from the Ring of Transcend. Oh, I see. Uh, the Room, Master of Disguise, super bad. Um, date movie, okay. House of Wax, <laughs> Gold Member, Knocked Up, Tommy Boy. Home Alone 1. I've never seen the Home Alone movies. I know, dude. I know. 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 Okay. I know, dude. I'm, I know. I know. I don't know why. It was just never something that was run by me, dude. <laughs> we have to watch party? We'll have to, dude. Liar, liar. That's a great one. Nutty Professor, also a great movie. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, another excellent movie. Another excellent fucking movie. I, I remember watching, um, I remember watching, um, 
Monty Python and the Holy Grail when I was like 10 and not understanding 65% of the humor, but still laughing really hard. But Kung Pao, the movie is a great one. The Mask, oh, The Mask had some great fucking moments. For me, a lot of movies made me laugh, but the one that really, like the first time that I remember going like, holy fuck, I didn't know that a movie could make me laugh this hard was Anchorman. You know, Anchorman got sort of memed and beaten into a pulp by by pop culture after its uh, after its release. But uh, dude, holy shit. The first time I watched that movie when I didn't even know what I was expecting, I just went to see it. Holy fuck. I laughed so fucking hard at Anchorman, dude. My friend Jeff, who was sitting beside me in the theater, I've told this story once or twice before, but we were all laughing really hard. And then at the point where um, uh, Jack Black, Jack Black punts Will Ferrell's dog off the bridge, uh, Jeff laughed so hard that he threw up his nibs all over the back of the head of uh, the guy who was sitting in front of him in the movie theater. He laughed so hard. That he's, ah, bleh. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I could tell it was carrying some some particular weight as to its humor, man. Yeah, it was gross, dude. He like was like half chewing on one and then he half choked, coughed, laughed with a mouthful of it. <laughs> all over the back of this dude's head sitting right in front of him. Naked Gun with some jazz cabbage. You wanna know another one for me that, that stands out above the rest? I watched this movie when I was feeling fucking terrible. And maybe this will be good for any of you out there who also might be feeling fucking terrible right now. I watched this. So how am I charging this amulet? Oh, I see, it's just charging right there. Um, uh, for anyone who might be feeling terrible right now, because I think the movie is available on... Um, Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. Uh, Spy with Melissa McCarthy made me laugh so fucking hard. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy is uh, one of the fun... Is it Melissa McCartney or Melissa McCarthy? I always fuck it up. I think it's Melissa McCarthy. She makes me laugh uh, harder than almost any other actor. Um, she's absolutely it's so fucking funny. Is it actually good? It's it is. I found it super fucking funny, man. You should watch Girls Night. I think I might have seen it. It's McCarthy. Okay. The man, the man on the bridge. I hit him with a burrito, and then he took Baxter with his foot, and he kicked him. <laughs> um, it was a Medea movie only because someone in the front in the front in the row in front of me had an amazing snort laugh and then they turned out to be a friend from high school days oh that's fucking crazy what are the chances of that huh that's so funny is the bot talk wait the first time firing up wow in over a year i just hit 57 and then had to step away for work i'm fairly confident you will enjoy it as the name of the room and at the end of the basement in my world Oof. Now, chat. I saw a couple of people mention it, but it's a movie that I struggled with, and I'm curious if anyone else similarly struggled to get into the humor. I couldn't. I just. I. Ju I couldn't get into um, Blazing Saddles. I couldn't get into it. I even paid to rent it on YouTube Video. I paid. I took out my big boy wallet and I paid to rent it, and we couldn't even finish it. I watched the first 40 or 50 minutes and I couldn't watch Blazing Saddles, man. I don't know why, I just... I wanted to find it funny and I wanted to like, get in on the, the jokes that people have with the show, but I just couldn't do it. Water. <laughs> I love Blazing Saddles so much. <laughs> it's not as good as the rest, interesting. Interesting. What about favorite anime? Oh my god, dude. Favorite anime for sure is Spirited Away. Spirited Away is a fucking work of art. Okay, find Darian Mograin. I'll find Darian Mograin. I ain't afraid of shit of some snakes. Princess Mononoke. Minus King of the Hill, that's your favorite anime. 
<laughs> Bubblegum Crisis. I'm gonna have to look that up. Ghost in the Shell was also phenomenal. But you know what? You, you want to know what? I thought the live action um, remake of um, Ghost in the Shell was extraordinary. I watched the anime and I liked the anime. Like I, that was how I was introduced to Ghost in the Shell. I loved the live action Ghost in the Shell. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was very well made. Even if it wasn't necessarily super reflective of the story, um, it was still a very entertaining movie. I fucking love Spirited Away. All of my, all of the Studio Ghibli movies, uh, all of Studio Ghibli make amazing movies. My personal favorite was Howl's Moving Castle. I own it, but I haven't seen it yet, which I'm definitely going to need to do. Ponyo is my favorite Studio Ghibli movie. I haven't seen Ponyo yet. That's the girl who's like made out of water or whatever, right? I never gave the live action a chance. You should, you should give it a chance. Go into it like not expect, if you go into it expecting it to absolutely dominate like the, you know, the whole story and to completely do service to every, every fan, every Ghost in the Shell fans, fans idea of the movie, you, you might not, like it but if you just go into it wanting to watch an entertaining movie you will almost certainly really like it can i go up here i don't think i'm supposed to but i'm just sort of doing it team america world police wrecked me i i remember seeing bits and pieces of it when it first came out because my mom thought it was too inappropriate for me to watch and uh, I did think a lot of it was very funny. Self-deprecating humor can be can be a good outlet. Not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. Get out of here, little flame bitches. Find the brand and claim the key. Find the brand. You will fall in Aha! There it is. For my collection. Now here's one that you guys may not have heard of before. This might seem a little bit of a fringe suggestion for you, but it's another movie that I highly recommend if you're looking for just sort of a nice, entertaining movie to take your mind off of all of the bullshit of 2020. Check out The Fantastic Mr. Fox with George Clooney. Great fucking film. Super good. I think chat wants me to give Mel Brooks another chance. For which movie? The Fantastic Mr. Fox is, a, is an excellent fucking film. I love that book and the movie. Yeah, it's great, man. Oh. Free Darian Mograin. Okay. Deal. I keep on trying to summon my fucking mount, but I keep forgetting that I can't. Um, please tell me that you've seen space balls. I know a lot about it. I know a lot of quotes and memes, but I've still not seen it, dude. I swear people sleep on the fantastic Mr. Fox. It's so good. I know. I know, dude. I know. I promise. I'm not kidding. There are some of these movies that I've just never seen. I don't know why, man. Okay. This is what I mean. What, bro? I'm just saying, dude. I'm trying, okay? <laughs> Do they even have movies in Canada? Okay, listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> have you seen the Isle of Dogs movie? Also a super good stop motion movie. I don't think so. Oh, I shouldn't have gone running, apparently. They're upset with me for running. Have I seen Hot Fuzz? I did like Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is a great fucking movie. Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead are two fucking classics. Definitely. What's the other one? Uh, Kubo. Kubo and the Four Strings. Kubo and the Four Strings is another good movie. I like that as well. Your presence here draws attention. This lady is not having it. She's not having. She's not impressed with us being here, dude. Of course. Isle of Dogs is by the same people who made the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Well, that actually is a perfect time, chat. For us, you yes, must. you know what time it is, chat. 
it is unfortunately time that we have to say our farewells, chat. I know it was just a bit of a short stream tonight. It was a little bit of a short stream tonight, but there's a very specific reason for this chat. It's because I am going to be waking up in six hours so that I can get ready for tomorrow's stream where we're going to be streaming for another eight hours and another two hours tomorrow night. And then on Thursday will be another eight hours and then another two hours on Thursday night and then another eight hours on Friday, another four hours on the weekend, another eight hours on Monday and two hours Monday night. So, uh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we will, uh, we'll call it there so I can get some sleep at a reasonable time. Big shout out to our sponsors, NordVPN. Uh, you can go to nordvpn.com slash Milton Pike one and use the promo code Milton Pike one to save 68% on a two year plan and get four months for free chat. And you get a, uh, an additional, uh, 30 day free trial money back guarantee. Thank you guys so much for being here. Stato Kahini, thank you for the two months. Fool Father, thank you for the prime. Resource Taco Buddy, thank you for the 14 months. Connor K800, thank you for the two gifted subscriptions. Thank you for all the biddies. Uh, Groovy Q, thank you for the 100 bits. Weird at last, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm so glad to hear that you tested negative for COVID, dude. Um, little pregnant building with a hundred bits and a dad joke on the way out says, what did one boob say to the other boob? If we don't get some support, people will think we're nuts. Do you feel better with yourself? Do you feel good with yourself for saying that? Are you glad you said that? Pesky Piglet, thank you for the four month resub, by the way, dude. Um, okay, now stand by. Let's see who we can throw the party on over to right now. We have 666 people to send over. We're gonna send the 666 people. I've got it, chat. We're gonna send you over to the people who are lurking and jerking in here earlier, Artesian Builds, who are currently uh, putting together a system themselves. Head on over there, spam some hearts in their chat. Have a wonderful night. Thank you for being here. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, chat. We're rounding the corner. We've made it, chat. You've made it. I know how shitty things are, but look how long things have been awful for, and you've made it. And we're rounding the corner, and things are gonna turn around and be beautiful. I love you. Take very good care of yourselves. I love you. Have a wonderful night. Wash your hands. Drink enough water. Get enough sleep. I'll see you guys very soon, okay? See you guys. <laughs>